Hi everyone and welcome to the O'Brien Center for Career Development Resume Creation Workshop. My name is Katie Fell and I'm one of the career advisors here at the O'Brien Center at Merrimack College. I work with the liberal arts students but we do work with all students um, and today I'm here to talk to you a little bit about how to create a resume from scratch or how to update your resume that you already have in existence. So first and foremost, um, to talk through a little bit of formatting, uh, I want to let you know about a really great resource that we do have available for you. If you log into your Handshake account, which you can access by going to careers.merrimack.edu, um, log in using your Merrimack credentials. Once you're in, click on the Career Center tab located in the upper portion of your screen. And then once you have clicked on that, select the resource section. This will bring you to a variety of resources we have available to you at all times, one of which um, is an excess amount of resumes that you can use. Um, there are some that are broken down by major specifically and some that are broken down by schools. So the whole purpose of going through what to put on a resume is really to talk about what's going to make you stand out in a crowd, um, especially now uh, as students who are applying to internships or potentially new grads applying to full-time positions, uh, there is some competition out there, surprisingly, and um, we really want to go over what is going to make you stand out. Not only let people know that you are equipped to do the job and more than qualified, but why you are the best fit. Some quick formatting overviews. Um, talking through the font, you do want to make sure it's readable. It doesn't really matter if it's a serif or sans serif font, as long as it is something that looks professional and also readable. A size 10 to 12, don't go smaller than 10, don't go higher than 12. Um, you can use special formatting like bolding, italics, and underlines to emphasize sections um, or different areas that you'd like to draw attention to. The margins you do want to keep between 0.5 inches and 1 inch. Uh, this will give you a good amount of white space on your resume and keep it readable. Um, this is possibly one of the most important parts of a resume. If you are an undergraduate student, um, with the exception of a student applying to a, some sort of graduate school like law school, your resume should not be more than one page. Um, if it is more than one page, please come see us and we can absolutely help talk you through it. As an example, um, I have been in career services for 11 years and my resume is a page and a half. Um, so if I can get mine down to a page and a half, you can absolutely get yours down to one. Um, be consistent throughout. Consistency through font, through sizing, through spaces, um, the way that you put your dates on your resume, that's all very important. Anything that is inconsistent is a distraction um, and people really look at your resume for about seven to 10 seconds, um, so you don't want any distractions. Uh, with that being said, you absolutely should proofread. When you're creating it, create it in Microsoft Word or a Google Doc. Um, once it's completely finalized, put it in a PDF format uh, when you are ready to send it. That will keep all of your formatting consistent and, and it will make it really easy for people to read. PDFs are readable as well by applicant tracking systems. I'm not sure if that's something that any of you are familiar with, but we can talk through that a little bit later on as well. There are a lot of different sections for a resume. Um, the ones up top here and on this page are actually the ones that are pretty um, common, uh, but you can absolutely add other categories. So you absolutely want your contact information listed, right? your name, your email address, and a phone number. A section for your education, uh, because that's what you've been spending your time on for the last four years or you're about to spend four years on. Uh, any skills that you're bringing to the table that are pertinent to the industry that you're interested in. Um, your experience, absolutely. Experience includes work, internships, any volunteer experiences. You can absolutely also split your experience section into relevant experience and additional experience to make sure that people are seeing items that might be most relevant to the position that you're applying to. Academic projects or research is absolutely something that could go on your resume as well. Extracurricular activities, um, that includes on and off campus. And, and other categories that you can put on here are any sort of certifications or licensures that you have. So if you have a CPR certification or you have your Massachusetts uh, teaching licensure certification, um, professional associations that you're a part of, um, any computer skills or coding skills, lab skills, um, honors and awards, languages that you speak, um, course projects, courseworks, there, really there is no rules as far as what types of categories you can have on your resume. 
For your contact information, this appears at the top of the page. Make sure you include a name, address, a phone number, and an email. Um, it is optional to include the URL for your LinkedIn or your portfolio. Just ensure that it is a clean URL. Um, it's not super long. Um, and really, this is a, a nice reminder to everyone as well that if you are putting your phone number on here, which you should be, make sure that it is professional. Make sure that your voicemail is empty, is able to accept messages, and has a concise and professional message attached to it. The same goes for your email address. We actually recommend using your Merrimack email address whenever possible. If you are a recent graduate, feel free to update that email address to the one that you are um, having your Merrimack email forwarded to or that you're going to be using most frequently. To talk a little bit about keywords uh, before we dive into what each section has, um, essentially keywords are the words that are going to help you get found uh, when you're being searched for in an online forum. A lot of the time you have to submit your resumes through a portal uh, on the company's website through Handshake or Indeed.com. And what that does is it uses coding on the back end um, to search for specific keywords. Uh, the keywords can be found um, in places like the job posting itself, on the company website. So the about us section or the mission section is a really great place to find some of those keywords. Um, anything in social media uh, for the company, uh, formal job descriptions and professional associations. So any ways that industries describe themselves to each other is a great way to, to identify some keywords. Um, and think about hard skills, but also soft skills, right? So if they're looking for somebody who is a collaborator, um, also somebody who can do coding, right? Very different. But these need to be incorporated into all portions of your resume. Um, basically showcasing that you know the language of the profession that you're hoping to enter. So looking at this example, you can see the student has integrated a summary section and she's used some keywords there. You can also see in this example that she's broken out some of her proficiencies and technical skills um, into ones that are more specific to the industry, right? So some of them are tech specific, like Photoshop and InDesign, while some of them are more industry specific, like event planning, blogging, etc. And you can also see here, um, she does have her LinkedIn URL here and is nice and clean with no excess letters or numbers. Um, so it'd be super easy for a recruiter. For the education section, you do wanna make sure that you have your college listed. You wanna go with your most recent degree at the top. Uh, for your degree, you are either getting a Bachelor of Science or a Bachelor of Arts. Make sure you know which one you are receiving. Uh, for your actual major and minor, you do want to make sure that you have it correctly listed as well, right? Make sure you get the name of your degree correct. Make, you can go to the website on Merrimack, the department website, and it will let you know exactly how that's listed. Um, include your expected date of graduation or your actual date of graduation. You just need the month and the year. You don't need the actual day. You can include your GPA if you'd like. If it's above a 3.0, um, consider it. If it is above a 3.5, definitely consider it. Um, you also can include relevant courses here, honors, um, or activities as a subsection. Um, for most students, you will absolutely be removing your high school activities um, as well as your high school listed under the education section. For your honors and awards, do rank it by importance to your career objective. Uh, the ranking on the screen uh, should be how you rank it. So dean's list, honors, awards, scholarships, um, president's list, higher than dean's list. Um, and then you can also list any honor societies that you're a part of as well. So there's a couple different examples here of how you could do that under the education section or in a totally separate section. As far as your skills are concerned, this is going to be something that you really should put a lot of thought into and will help with that keyword analysis. So it is an absolute must for certain majors, uh, but really all students should have something listed under a skills section. Um, so laboratory skills examples could be some of the ones that are on your screen, like a pH meter, analytical balance, um, titration or pipetting, computer skills, any languages um, that you have there. So MySQL, um, Python, etc. Languages. If you absolutely speak another language, for sure put it on there. You could indicate your fluency as well. So it also indicate the working knowledge of, of your fluency as well. So if you can say conversational versus professional. 
um, equipment, if there's any hard equipment that you use as part of your positions or internships or major, software systems you're familiar with, so that could include AutoCAD, but it could also include things like Photoshop, um, a variety of Adobe suites. Um, and then think about some industry specific skills as well, like you saw in that first example, right? Digital content creation, lesson planning, um, patient health questionnaire nine, if you are working in the psychology field. There's a lot of different things that you could put here, and your career advisor is absolutely happy to help you with that. Your experience section is what's going to take up a bulk of your resume. Um, this could include full-time or part-time positions. This could include self-employment or contract positions that you've taken, uh, internships or co-ops that you've participated in, volunteer work that you've done if it's pretty substantial and the list kind of goes on. Um, you wanna list your most recent first, so reverse chronological order, what you're doing now, and then backtracking from there. And again, absolutely consider splitting this into two sections if it's appropriate. So for example, if you did an internship last summer in an engineering firm, um, but you're currently working part-time on campus, splitting it into relevant experience will actually allow you to pull that engineering internship to the top. So when people are looking at your resume, they see that experience first, and then they see the additional experience that you're bringing to the table. So in addition to being a full-time student, you do have a full or part-time job as well. For the details, you do want between two and five bullets per job. Um, make sure that you get rid of words that you don't really need, so it doesn't need to be written in prose or a full sentence. Eliminate the little words a and the, etc. cetera, um, right in the proper tense. So if it's a current position that you're doing, you want your verbs to be written in present tense. If it's something that you did last summer, you want them to be in past tense. List the bullets in order of importance. So either the most frequent task that you did, um, the most impressive project that you did, or based on the job description that you're looking at, um, what they might find to be the most important. So things that you'll be doing in the internship or job that you're applying to. Um, using things like numbers, percentages, and dollar amounts also catches the eye and it lets people spend a little bit more time reading your resume, which is absolutely something that we want. It's also a way that you can quantify what you've done so you can really show your impact. You also wanna showcase your accomplishments when possible rather than your tasks. So these experience bullet points shouldn't be just a copy of your job description, right? We really wanna know what your impact was uh, when you were there in that position or internship. Assume that you're writing in first person and lead with some really, really strong action verbs. Uh, we do have a list of action verbs available on our website um, and in Handshake as well. Um, so don't worry about kind of screenshotting this, but absolutely look into it and you can, you can meet with your career advisor at any point too if you're having trouble coming up with some. For the details, again, minimize just the list of responsibilities, but find new ways to tell people about your job scope. scope. So kind of telling me, okay, I worked with um, some kids at a summer camp, that's really great. But if you tell me that you ran um, a summer camp for 12, 13 year olds, uh, 12 hours a day, that's a little bit more impressive, right? Don't just describe your task, tell me why it was important and what you contributed and really focus on, again, your achievements and how you brought something special to the team. Use context to add meaning and value. Um, understand why to get to the what. So why were you hired? Why did you get promoted? Um, what was the problem that you solved? Why was it so important that we solved the problem? Um, so this can really transform any job from a generic sort of uh, overview to a very specific, memorable, interesting, and unique bullet point. So taking a look at this example, something like, being a server, which is absolutely a fantastic job to have on your resume. Um, you can see here a wait staff at Friendly's. So pretty basic, took customer orders, bus dishes, handled cash, and helped with cleanup, right? Everyone knows what a server does. Wrong, not everybody knows what a server does. They have assumptions of what a server does, but it's up to you to paint that picture. Um, so instead, looking at the context, transforming a struggling restaurant into a highly regarded destination based on your emphasis on customer service, right? Worked at a fast pace with a cheerful attitude, performing a range of duties, including opening and closing, um, and also, 
being picked by a manager to train new associates, right? So these are a ton of responsibility. Um, something that can make this even stronger would be if you had an idea of how many people were coming in that you were waiting on, right? Um, that would absolutely let me know like how busy this was and, and really how you had to multitask. So other things that could go on your resume would be research and projects that you've done, um, especially for some majors. Uh, before internships, this is really where you get a lot of your related experience. So think through the projects that you've done in some of your courses, right? Um, and a windmill project in your intro to engineering uh, class, you can see that you absolutely created a structure, um, developed a structure and tested the structure. Uh, in your social media marketing class, right? You go over, um, a company, you get to select a company, um, and then you conduct research on how they use social media and then give your recommendations on ways to change their social media to increase uh, marketing for that uh, product. So these are, again, really great ways to introduce some of the keywords that people are going to be looking for. Extracurricular activities are also something that can go on your resume that includes athletics, that includes student organizations, uh, intramurals, volunteering, um, anything that's more than, than a day of service, right? You want it to be a little bit significant. Um, if you've had any leadership roles within any of these extracurricular activities or organizations, you'll definitely want to indicate that as well because that's an added responsibility. So taking a look at this sample, um, it's a little bit blurry with the words, but you can see just the formatting overall. You can see the different sections. They have education, technical skills, professional experience, mentoring and tutoring and projects. It's clean. The margins are all the same. The dates are all written the same. The bullet point spacing is the same. Um, it includes skills and it flows really, really well. So there's nothing to distract me and I can really focus on the content of the resume. Um, again, we have lots of samples of resumes in Handshake. We also have our resume booklet available for viewing on our website. So check those out for sure. For some of our students, you will be able to get a little bit more creative with your resumes. Um, we're starting to see a lot more of this sort of two thirds, one third style of resume. So kind of taking up parts of the page strategically. You can see they've used some icons along the top as well, just for some visual interest. And then they've allowed um, some of the things that are pretty standard like education and honors and courses to take up a little less room. So the focus can really be on some of these project and leadership positions. Um, Canva.com is another free resource that you can use uh, to, to play around with different formats. When you are building a creative resume, make sure that you do it in a format that you're comfortable editing uh, because sometimes if you're using like an Adobe suite or something like that, your career advisor may not have a ton of experience with the editing. So it does help the process a lot faster if you're, you're able to edit yourself. And we're absolutely happy, happy to take a look at any creative resumes as well if you're looking for some feedback as far of, as if it looks too busy or if you should integrate some color choices or anything like that. And again, as a reminder, after you build your resume, you absolutely want to meet with your career advisor. It often takes many drafts to get to your resume um, at its final point. So a lot of students will make appointments with us uh, just to create a resume from scratch and it'll be a 30 minute appointment with nothing. Um, and then they want to leave with a fully functioning resume. And, and it really does take a little bit more time than that. So again, a reminder, give yourself enough time to create the resume um, and, and do the revisions before it's time to apply for the position itself. Um, and then again, another friendly reminder, you do need to update your resume at least once a semester. So with any new projects that you've done, take a fresh look at it and see if there's anything else that you want to highlight. Maybe you took on a new leadership role or you got a new part-time job. Make sure that it's as up-to-date as possible because then you're going to be able to utilize um, a speed when you are applying to internships and jobs that come up. Again, please visit careers.merrimack.edu for a list of all of these resources and more.